Hey, this is CF Tracking, and I am going to be reviewing the Sunto Baro 9 Titanium. And we're going to get into some details, but again, this is a website dedicated to tracking devices to figure out what actually works for high intensity interval training and more specifically for CrossFit. Um, there's a lot of websites and reviews for running, biking, and triathlons, but this is dedicated to CrossFit evaluation and does it work or is it beneficial? So with that, let's get into a little bit of the review. What I'm going to do today is just tell you an overview of the watch, and then we're going to look at it hands-on. We're going to look at the app and what that experience feels like, and then we're going to talk about some of the data and the benefits therein. So how does it perform in a workout specifically for CrossFit training? How does it evaluate your effort and work? How does it evaluate your load and your training over a prolonged period of time? How does it evaluate your recovery and your needed recovery? From the workout and just your general overall resources what else does it do and do i like it with a brief summary and if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing i'm trying to build a subscriber base and we have a lot of good things coming up i'm going to be testing the chorus vertex and um, a, a upcoming new release uh, from chorus as well as finishing up a sleep study tracking all these primary you know sunto garmin polar Fitbit as far as like sleep metrics to see which seems to give the best information. So stay tuned for a lot of that stuff, but uh, subscribe if you can so that you can stay tuned to it. Um, so the overall size, it's listed as 51 millimeters by 17 millimeters thick. Um, taking some calipers to it, it's 50.7 by 16.7 millimeters. So it's a little bit smaller than listed, and you can compare that to a Garmin Phoenix 6 that's 47 millimeters by 16 millimeters thick, or a 6X, it's 51 millimeters by about 17 millimeters thick. Um, so it compares right in the middle there, obviously more towards the 6X. Uh, the weight of it with the titanium is coming in at 76 grams, and you compare that to a Phoenix 6 at 83, um, or the 6X uh, coming in above that. The screen, you know, it doesn't actually on the website, doesn't list the size, like the width of the screen. Um, and it's measuring 1.3, like 3.4. So a little bit over 1.3 inches of a screen size. So that's great compared to, you know, the Phoenix 6, which is at 1.3 or the 6X at 1.4. Um, so it's coming in great there. So this is the titanium version. It means it has a, a sapphire glass on it. It has the barometric altimeter to be able to track uh, elevations. I definitely feel like it's got a solid build quality. It's got large buttons on the side, but surprisingly, I think maybe because it was a little bit lighter because it's the titanium model, it feels very comfortable. And the titanium model comes with this, and I'll show you a picture close up, this uh, type of band that's got this hexagonal shape, but the straps uh, are not locked in place. And so it just felt really comfortable. Um, obviously on the back, it's got you know, a heart rate sensor, you know, it's 24 millimeter clips. Uh, it actually does have a touch screen. So not on some of the bigger watches, uh, the Titan has a touch screen and the, the Polar Vantage V, um, but none of the Garmin's have touch screens on the big training watches, but the touch screen works well. It's been, you know, working effectively and not getting in the way of workouts. Um, the battery life is rated at 14 days, but I've been getting about six to six and a half days. Now I like to keep the brightness built up. One of the best things about this watch versus none of the others in the Sunto line, and definitely not Polar um, or Coros, only in Garmin, can you have an adjustable backlight. So this allows you to adjust the brightness of the backlight, you know, from 5% all the way up to 100%. So you can, you can adjust it. I like to run the backlight at 75%. So that's probably why I'm getting six to six and a half days. Um, if you compare the brightness of the 100% backlight to some of the other manufacturers, which is what I like to do to figure out how much is it really compared to something you might have seen on the market. So it's 55% brighter than the Polar Vantage V at full brightness, 33% um, brighter than the Chorus Apex Pro, 17% uh, brighter than the 245, the Garmin 245, and 10% brighter than the Polar Grit X. And then it's less bright at full brightness than the Garmin 6 series and the 945. So um, you're not going to get quite as much, but the transflective screen works great and the you know the brightness does work well. One thing that's unique about the brightness of the backlight is it doesn't have a wrist raise gesture, which is a bummer. You can turn an always on dimly lit, which is what I use. I don't find it to be disturbing at night, but it's just always on dimly lit backlight. And then when you go to push a button, 
um, you obviously get a full backlight at that time. So that's been working fine for me. If I have the backlight completely off, it gets to be a pain to have to push a button. But if I use that dimly lit back backdrop, that works well. Um, you don't get to add your own watch faces, but it does have a handful of watch faces, which I just happen to like. You can hit, you can tap the screen and it'll rotate through a few basic pieces of data, but you don't get an unlimited set of data to choose from. But I like the watch faces built in. They work fine. I like the extra big one. Um, you get sleep tracking. It gives you a quality score. It is used something first beats, um, analytics for sleep tracking. So it gives you sort of a sleep score. Um, it doesn't give you in-depth deep and REM sleep, it just gives you sort of a generic deep sleep. But also built into this is what's called resources, which compares to Garmin's body battery. What that is, is using the heart rate sensor to track your heart rate variability over the course of the day. And when you're having high levels of stress, that creates high level of heart rate variability, which means that you're, you're burning your energy out. So it does track your, your resources, which is like your body battery or how much you have in you to determine if you're depleted or not. So the sleep is one aspect of it, which is useful, but the resources is a good aspect, a better aspect, I would say. It's got a fitness score. You can, you know, your VO2 max, your estimated age. It's got navigations and a compass. We're not going to get into much of the navigation because this is for tracking CrossFit workouts. Um, and then it's got obviously exercise profiles. So there's about 80 or more exercise profiles you can choose from. So a million different great ones. It gives you a little picture based on what type of one. And in the workouts, it'll track your training effort, which is, or training effect, which is a first speed analytic detail that Garmin uses primarily. So it'll do your training effect and your EPOC, which is your ex excess post oxygen consumption. So if your workout was long and hard, your amount of oxygen your muscles need to recover is based on a score and that EPOC score. So it gives you those tracking metrics for an exertion level evaluation from the workout, which is helpful for knowing how hard you really pushed yourself, not just looking at what did the heart rate graph say and what zone you were in, although it'll give you all those things as well. Um, the downside, and we'll look, we'll talk about this in more summary form, but it doesn't have load tracking. You can get your, it gives you like a tracking of your uh, amount of time exercising over a week of period and over a longer period of time, but it doesn't give you a load evaluation for how hard every workout was. So maybe you worked out for just an hour, but maybe you spent the whole time in the peak level, you know, uh, heart rate zone. So you're crushing your body and you do that over a period of days and something on the watch should be telling you that you're over overdoing it, but this doesn't have load tracking. So let's get into an evaluation first of the heart rate sensor when it comes to CrossFit training and just seeing if it works. And, and then we'll talk about um, the watch and we'll go through some of the watch aspects. And then we'll look at sort of the app overall and then talk about the summary. Thanks so much for watching. So I like first to look at how the heart rate tracks to determine if it's a good measure of exertion, because obviously the exertion scores you're getting is going to determine if you really pushed yourself. So does the optical heart rate standalone by itself functionally work for CrossFit workouts? So this is a snapshot. And so I'm just going to go through compared to a chest strap off of a Garmin and some of the basic Garmin data bits. So you can see in this workout, um, you know, this included, and if you look at it on the chest strap, you can see it was a two intense workouts for periods of time. So you can see the hill and the heart rate, you know, pushed it up and then there was a brief pause or a rest and recovery and then another Metcon. So this is two Metcons back to back. And you can see in this Garmin chart, it's 167 average beats per minute. And here in the middle top, you can see 157. So it missed that, but you can see at the bottom, it also had an erratic heart rate tracking. So it doesn't look smooth and continuous. It gave me eight hours of recovery in the middle there, PTE score of 3.6 versus 3.5. So in this workout, you can see that it was a warm up, a little bit of lifting in the beginning, and then a prolonged Metcon, 150 beats per minute. Here you can see that it only came in at the very top on the Sunto. This is the Sunto snapshot, 137 beats per minute. And the heart rate did not track continuously. Again, you see the chart, it did not track continuously. So in this workout, it was an interval workout. It was a longer one outside, a little bit hotter. So just doing uh, suicide sprints, burpees, and 
push-ups, but just sort of in an interval fashion with lighter, quicker intervals in the beginning and then more protracted intervals at the end. And you can see the, the graph is a little all over the place. I mean, I guess in all of these, they look it looks a little all over the place. But if you look at the average beats per minute, the top there, 135 versus 135. So it tracked somewhat more on point um, in that particular workout. Now in this one, was again two subsets so a little bit more heavy lifting imam in the beginning and then a 10 minute sort of all out metcon in the end again you see smooth charts smooth graphs an average heart rate of 153 and then here you see an average heart rate of 141 but what's more important at this one you see the heart rate graph in the bottom doesn't look very clear but in the bottom heart rate zones chart in this where i'd finally corrected the watch to track the right heart rate zones you can see it only gave me in that red zone five four and a half minutes but in the real workout with the chest strap it was 15 and a half minutes that's well off the mark and it will mean that all the workout stats and details aren't tracked so from a optical heart rate evaluation it does okay on basic things like uh, push-ups and even some sprints and suicides but it does not do well on tracking things that create flex throughout the wrist so the biggest thing i could suggest would be to use a chest strap okay so now just looking at the watch and then comparing it to the app itself you just get a basic landing page uh the backlight comes on you scroll down you're going to get a heart rate field and you can go in and see your heart rate over periods of time um and then you're back to the bottom you go through this is the resources so the tragic thing about sunto's development is they do not do not have this information on the app so this is a first snapshot, but you click into it and you can see your resources over a period of time. So your build, what if you're more calm state or if you're in more of a rest state, then it will track your resources as regenerating. And if you sleep, obviously it's regenerating, but if you're declining, if you're working hard, if you're exerting yourself and are high stress, it's gonna de decrease. So this is like the body battery. It's a very useful aspect just to overall wellness and recovery. Then you got steps and calories you can track that over time. And with the touch screen, you can always just go back. I found the touch screen to be very responsive. Um, so like Polar's touch screen, I didn't like very much. It just sort of seemed not as effective. So this is just the training. This just counts yesterday. And you could click into it and see your recovery time. And I'm gonna show you in the app, recovery time is coming out relatively low for workouts, but um, this is where it summarizes the recovery time. So if you did, a workout right now that required eight hours of recovery and then a workout 20 minutes later that requires 12 hours of workout and this recovery, then this would show 20 hours of recovery. Now, recovery time is another first speed analytic and it's really beneficial. The downside is, is that so far, it's just coming in super low. So the recovery time is a great conceptually, but not if it's not correct. So most of my workouts um, have an intensity where it says at least 24 hours of recovery. So you shouldn't do anything else intense for the next day. This is coming in at like eight hours on most of the workouts. So either way, you see the recovery. This is your training plan. You can see your workouts over time. So this is what they would estimate for your load tracking. Are you working out on a regular basis based on number of minutes? And it gives you a goal that you're tracking based on for a week. Um, so does that help me? Well, it's not accepts, you know, it doesn't really help from an analytical standpoint because it doesn't show you enough. Um, it's your altitude. Obviously, this has got the barometric pressure, barometric altimeter built into it. You can see both the pressure as well as the estimated altitude. So that's great. Um, again, touchscreen works fantastic. And then you have sleep tracking. Now, sleep tracking is, is, I would say, good on the watch. It's not great because they don't go into all of First Beats analytics, but they do use first beats analytics. So they're not writing their own algorithms. Um, total time of sleep, sleep quality was poor and it just gives you average heart rate, the time you fell asleep, the time you woke up and then this sort of deep sleep score or deep sleep time. So the amount of time you're in deep sleep and that can change day to day. I don't know why it's 43 minutes because usually it's around an hour and a half to two hours, which is somewhat of a total estimate of your deep and your REM sleep you would see on other devices. Um, but either way, I just like that it gives you a sleep score poor quality, and we can track back in to see oh, the same the same basic thing. So you swipe to the left always just to get out of a out of a chart. You can see your average heart rate while you slept, 
which is just useful. And then you're back into the main landing page. Scroll down, you get your fitness level. This has been tracking pretty low. It's your VO2 max. Uh, so my VO2 max on a Garmin, just on a basic run. The only way it tracks this is if you do a run um, is 41.2, which on uh, Garmin is 48. So either way, um, it's useful information, just a basic summary. And I like the colors. The colors are, are you know, work pretty well. You can always double double tap and it should take you back. <laughs> it should take you back to the main screen when you double tap, but obviously that doesn't work uh, or hasn't been working. But um, one of the things that I'll show you because I really liked it is on the exercise profiles, it automatically goes into the last profile. So you don't have to scroll through. It goes into the last workout you did. And one thing that's interesting about it is you have a few different things you can do before you start. So you can scroll up for options. You can track it under some Sunto Plus um, additional layers of evaluation. You can track, but you, but you can turn the backlight on for the whole period of time. If you're doing a CrossFit workout and you do have a lot, you, you're running 400 meter intervals, you can turn the GPS. Obviously you wouldn't want to turn the wrist-based heart rate off. You can track, change the battery mode, the theme changes it from light to dark. So you can change from the background being black to the background being light. And the background being light is way useful. Um, and it will ask you, this is if it wants to, you want it to ask you how you're feeling. I'm just gonna show you one screen snapshot because there's a few things I like it. Now, one thing you can also do is a quick change of battery settings if you're near dead on battery. Um, you can just push the up and it'll change the battery metrics. You can see it went down because it's now giving me 41 hours of tracking. And if you hit it again, it's going to give me 190 hours because basically everything is off. And then you track it again, it goes back to full and you can see the, you know, the heart rate comes back on. But if you track it in a workout in that light background, a few things you can see here. So you can adjust these data screens, but, um, here's just a heart rate, average heart rate and, um, no, that doesn't work. So you can also see that it's got the time displayed. So in order to get, this is one of the problems with, in order to get the backlight to appear, you actually have to turn it on before the workout, um, which is what I always suggest doing, or you have to uh, push one of these buttons, which obviously causes something to occur with the workout. But they give you the time, which I just think this is really useful to be able to track your workout and see all of these stats, but also to have the time. So we'll go ahead and end that here. It's going to ask you how you felt, if it was great, and then you'll get in a summary of stats. And it gives you all the stats. It won't show it here, but I'll look at it in the logbook to show you what kind of stats come up on the watch, and then we'll look at it on the app. Um, one of the things just to state before moving forward about the Sunto, and it does, it's very responsive to moving through to zone. So it's got a good processor in it, which is great. Um, so we'll just delete that. But one of the things about Sunto is a lot of information is stored only in the watch. You can get very generic sleep details on the app. You don't get resources and you don't get some other components. Um, you just get your basic summary of things. So if you look at what a workout looks like, um, and this was just a shorter, as we saw like the two hills, um, you get your heart rate. You can see obviously like the uh, heart rate zones or the heart rate tracking, the intensity zones, there's the recovery time of eight hours versus Garmin said 20 hours. Your PTE is your training effect, which is that same zero to five score that First Beat is, has developed, which is a very effective measure of how much effort you put into it. And then you have your uh, exercise post-oxygen consumption, the score for how hard the work was and how much oxygenation is required for your muscles. So um, you can get your, obviously you can get your uh, barometric, you know, altimeter rise and fall, but that's not really useful. So you can click back out of that. So let's look at the app. Um, so this is the basic summary for the watch. Those are the main landing pages. Um, you know, you can see heart rate, you can see resources, you know, steps and calories burned for the day, how much time and how much recovery time, what your altitude is, what your sleep score is, and your fitness level. And you click back and you, there it goes, it works at the front. So the size and the weight, it obviously is a very thick watch, but I haven't really noticed it. I mean, these the strap itself, because it's this sort of soft, it is extra thick. I feel like it's actually more comfortable because there's a lot of give and move in the buckle brackets, um, 24 millimeter, obviously. And it just, you know, the titanium build has felt like a lighter watch. So let's look at the app and then come back for a full summary. Okay, so looking at the app, 
it's relatively simple. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. Um, you get a summary in the middle here of your total time of exercise based on your goal. And then you get a summary in the very middle of the page, steps, calories, and sleep for the period. Then you can scroll down. You'll see a workout. You'll maybe see a blog post and another workout. And so it'll track you know, workouts in different ways. So this is a biking workout. This is a CrossFit workout. I do love that it puts a picture there, as stupid as that sounds. Um, next over on the tab over is your diary of exercise. So you can see your diary over the course of weeks, steps over the course of weeks, calories. It does show your sleep totals, and then it shows you your fitness level. This is an evaluation. I just did one run a week just to sort of track how it was estimating the fitness level to be or the VO2 max. Um, so when you look at sleep in specifics, this is all the information you'll ever get. So it just shows you a daily diary. And the information that's on this page in the Daily Diary is the same information that's on the summary page. You get the total time of sleep, the score, the quality as they call it, and the total amount of like the average heart rate, deep sleep, and time awake. So you don't get a lot of information. You can't click into this, like you can't click into this thing on the bottom and try to get it to give you more information for how much you moved around or how your heart rate was. So not a lot there. Um, this shows you the heat map. If you're a runner, this is obviously very cool. So you can track um, other often used running routes around you that people have used. So that's really helpful. And then uh, leaderboard, this just tracks if you're tracking against other people. So if you go into your workouts, this is what a workout looks like. This was Monday's workout. This is the second part of Monday's workout. I did some running and then did this. Um, so again, it gave me a, a training effort or training effect on the right middle there of 3.2, but only eight hours of recovery. And average heart rate was off and the time in the peak zone was off. So this is a four and a half minute and it was really 15 and a half minutes. But um, overall, the analysis is great. So you can see the training effect and the epoch give you scores to know how hard your workout was. So that is a fundamental thing for CrossFit tracking is to know how hard you really pushed yourself and to get a gauge for that. But what they don't show is in this chart here, you don't see, you can see an analysis. This just sort of shows you a summary of activities over the period of time, but it doesn't show you how hard you're really pushing yourself. It just shows you the total minutes that you're pushing yourself or the total minutes of your work, whether it's a light run or an intense, um, you know, 40 minute Metcon or you did Murph twice in a row, you're not gonna get a clear tracking of how much load you're placing on your muscles. And then the other thing is that when it comes to sleep or a recovery, it gives you these sleep stats, but you don't get to see the resources or that body battery function like you do in Garmin. So this is the summary of the basic, you know, the last page is just sort of summary details, settings, nothing big there, but it's a very simple app. I don't find it to be problematic, or at least I don't hate it in its simplicity. I just wish they would evolve it to have training load tracking, because then I think it would be a great complete watch, because I have really loved it, even though it's huge, and I'll talk about that in a second, but this is the overview of the app. Okay, so all in all, what do I think of the Sunto Baro 9 from a CrossFit training perspective? Here are the things I love and the things I think that need to be changed or improved. I do love the exercise evaluation that they give you training effect and exercise post oxygen consumption. So those two scores are valuable. Um, I, you know, wish that they would put those in some sort of um, easier to read summary than in a check mark box. I love that they give you the resources or they track your heart rate variability over time to determine how like strained, stressed and worn down your body is. I love the fit and feel of this, despite the fact that it's so big. I love how it feels. It feels comfortable. I love the band strap. It's just thick, and for some reason, it's like thick coupled with soft rubber. It's great. One of the things I forgot to mention earlier is it does do all the smart notifications from your watch, and it is, works fantastically. I say fantastically. Maybe that should be the assumption, but I had such a terrible experience with the Polar line of watches that the, that the notifications were just so problematic or in, infrequent or inaccurate that this has been great. Everything comes through just like it does on a Garmin, just like it would on an Apple Watch. You can see all that. Um, I do like that the backlight is adjustable, that you can range from 5% to 100%. I want to jack mine up. I don't care if the, about the battery life. Um, I do love the data of that's on the layout on the watch screen itself. When you're in a workout, the types of data fields, the way it's laid out, the way you get the time of day up at the top, because that's pertinent and useful. The fact you can go from 
a black background to a white background. You can turn the backlight always on. I love all of those aspects that you can control when you're going into the workout. I do love the battery life. I mean, it said 14 days. I'm getting about six and a half or six even because I like the battery life up. But I still like that. I mean, I still think that that's, that's great battery life for the most part. You don't have to re recharge every three to four days even when you have the backlight. And I do like the touch screen. I think the touch screen has worked effectively well. It's not like it's going to come into problems with water hitting it or anything like that. And when I experienced the solar, I mean, the Sunto process over Polar being another big competitor, I love the experience of the Sunto watch compared to the Polar watch system. I just wish that they had the load thing. So they don't do as much deep analytics on the sleep and they don't track your load over time, which is what Polar does well. So I, I really want this to be a much better watch experience because I think this would be a contender for the top spot or second in line to Garmin, but because it doesn't have load. So that's the main thing that I don't like. It doesn't have load tracking. And when I say load, it'll track your minutes, like how much time you spent exercising, but it's not giving you a score of like how much you crushed your body and were in a peak zone for a period of time like Polar and Garmin do. They will track the level of exertion and that is what determines your load or if you're whether you're training or under training, over training or under training or maintaining. I wish that the recovery time was in the app itself, not just in the watch itself. Um, sometimes I feel like, or the resources, I'm sorry, the resources, I wish was a field in the app. You could see your heart rate over the course of your sleep, but no, I wish there was more information in the app. I wish you could see, you know, how your resources are building and have that be a clearer picture than just looking on the watch. And the recovery time of workouts is what I meant to mention is recovery time's just off. It's about a half or below half of what it should be for the level of workout, level of intensity of workouts that I've been doing. And just in general, more info in the app. And the last thing is just no no wrist raise backlight. So you can't get it just to you know, turn and a backlight to appear. You can turn that always on dim one, or, and then, or you can just push a button to cause it to turn on, but that's not always effective. But I love the watch. I really do. I love the watch. I just don't think all of the components are what they should be for the highest end watch that they're offering and the things that we would need for tracking and training tracking our load and our impact of, of workouts uh, for CrossFit. So that's the summary. Stay tuned for lots more of other reviews and things like that. See ya, uh, tracking.com. Thanks.